In this lesson, we're going to practice graphing equations that are shown in slope-intercept form on the coordinate plane. Well, what is slope-intercept form? Well, it is a format that makes it really easy to graph equations. Now, the slope-intercept formula looks like this. y equals mx plus b. Now, let's look at the different parts to this equation. m right here stands for slope. And slope is the change in y over the change in x. So slope is a rate of change. So this value right here is defined by change in y over the change in x. A lot of times you may see this as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And really, this is just a way that you can figure out what slope is if you were given any two points. You could just plug in the second y value and subtract from it the first y value from two different points. And do the same thing with the two x values from two different points. And whatever that rate is, you would substitute m with that rate. And the b in our equation represents what we call the y-intercept. And that's simply, at what point on the y-axis will our straight line cross the y-axis? Now, the x and the y in our equation will just represent a single point located on the straight line. And it could be any point that is located on that straight line. So if we know what our slope is, and we know what our y-intercept is, we could literally take any point on that line, plug in its x and y value, and we should come up with a true statement, meaning that whatever number we get on this side will be equal to the value we get on this side. Well, to get a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's just take our first example and graph it and see what it looks like. So the first thing that we should do when graphing an equation in slope-intercept form is to look at the y-intercept, which is all the way at the end of your equation. Because we know our line is going to cross the y-axis at that point. So find negative 5 on the y-axis and create a single point. We know for sure that our straight line is going to cross through that point. Now after that, we go to the number in front of x, which is our slope. Now remember, slope is a rate of change, the change in y over the change in x. But we only have one number. And whenever you have one number, you should write a 1 on the bottom so you can show a rate of one thing compared to another thing. In this case, those things are the rate of change of y over x. So for every two units that the y changes, the x is going to change one unit. And we can show this by going back to our y-intercept, and we can change the y value by going up to, but the change in x, is 1, so we go over 1. And from this new point, we can go up 2 more and go over 1. And notice our slope is positive, which means from left to right, our line will be going upward from left to right. And we can continue to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 more, and over 1. Now, we can just look at these dots and see they form a straight line. So let's go ahead and draw a line through these points. So this line right here represents the equation y equals 2x minus 5. Now, earlier I said that you can choose any of these points located on that line, find the coordinates of a single point, and plug them into the equation, and you should come up with a true statement. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. If we take a look at this point right here, the coordinates are 4 for the x value and 3 for the y value. So let's go ahead and take our y value, which is 3, and replace it with the y right here. Then take our slope, which is 2, and multiply it by the x value at this point, which is 4, and then subtract 5. 
So on the left-hand side of our equation, we have 3. And on the right-hand side of our equation, we have 2 times 4, which is 8. And 8 minus 5 is 3. And notice we come up with a true statement. And if we were to take the coordinates of any point on this line and plug them in to our equation, y equals 2x minus 5, we would end up getting a true statement. Now let's graph our second equation here. Now this time we have a positive y-intercept. So we're going to locate positive 5 on the y-axis. And from this point, we have to go downward 2 because our slope is negative, And then we have to go over 1. So remember, if you have a whole number, you have to put a 1 at the bottom. Because if a number is by itself, that really is just the change in your y value. But you also need a change in x value as well. So continuing on from this point, we go down 2 more over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so on. Now that we have enough points to create a line, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to draw a line through these points. And we have successfully graphed the equation y equals negative 2x plus 5. Now let's graph the equation y equals negative one-third x plus 4. The y-intercept in this case is positive 4. So we know that our line is going to intersect the y-axis at positive 4, which is right here. So let's make a single point. Now we look at our slope. Now right away we should notice our slope is negative, which means our line should be moving downwards from left to right through positive 4 on the y-axis. So what we're going to do is go to our y-intercept, and from here we're going to go down 1 and then over 3. Now when making your second point by looking at the slope, what we should notice is that our first move from the y-intercept should either be up or down. If our slope is positive, the first move is going to be up, and if our slope is negative, our first move is going to be down as is the case with this example. And the denominator always tells us how many units to move to the right. Whatever the denominator is, we always move to the right that many spaces. So when doing your second point, you're either going to go up and to the right if we have a positive slope, or down and to the right if it is a negative slope, as it is in this case. So let's go back to this point and go down one more and over three. Now we have enough points to make our straight line, so let's go ahead and do that. And we have successfully graphed the equation y equals negative one-third x plus four. Now let's go ahead and graph this equation, y equals three x minus two. So our line is going to cross the y-axis at negative two, so we go ahead and make a point at negative two. And the slope in this case is positive. And remember, when you have a whole number, for slope, that number represents the change in y, but it must be expressed as its relationship to the change in x, which would be 1. So whenever you have a whole number for slope, don't forget to put 1 as your denominator. So we can see that our slope is positive 3, positive 1, which means our first move is going to go up 3 and then to the right 1. We go up 3 more over 1. And we could go up three more and over one, but notice we would be off of our graph. So we have enough points to make our line anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to start here and go through these points. And this line right here represents this equation, y equals 3x plus 1. Now I want to point out something here that's rather significant. If we look at the slope in this equation, negative one-third, and we compare it to the slope in this equation, positive three over one, we should notice that these are reciprocal of each other, and one is negative and one is positive. Whenever you have two different equations, 
where one is negative, one is positive, and they are reciprocal of each other, what's going to happen with the two lines is that they will be perpendicular to each other, which means that right here we have a right angle. So there is a 90 degree angle formed here, as well as here, and here, and here. So anytime you have two different equations where the slopes are not only reciprocal of each other, but one is negative and one is positive, they will form lines that are perpendicular to each other. So before we even graph these equations, that is something that we could have noticed. All right, let's try one more example. Now these two examples look a lot different than the previous examples. Notice that in this equation we do not have an x value and in this equation we do not have a y value. Whenever you have y equal to a single number here, what you're going to have is a horizontal line or a line going from left to right. And when you have x equal to a single number, that is just going to represent a line that is a vertical line. Now anytime you have y equal to a number like this and you have a horizontal line, your slope is going to be zero. And that would make sense because if we had the slope intercept formula written and we said that the slope or m had a value of zero, that means it doesn't really matter what x is because we are multiplying zero by whatever x is, which would result in zero. So really we are just getting rid of the m and the x in our equation, leaving just y equal to whatever a number is. In this case, y equals 4. So whenever you have y equal to a number, find that number on the y-axis and draw a straight line horizontally through that value. So this line right here is y is equal to 4. Now here is something we should notice about this line right here. Any point on this line will have a y value of 4. For example, this point is located at 1, 4. This is located at 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, and so on. So no matter what point we select on this line, the y value will always be 4. Now let's take a look at x equals negative 3. Whenever you have equations like these, what will result is a vertical line going through this value through the x-axis. So let's locate negative 3 on the x-axis, which is right here and then draw a vertical line going through negative 3. Now whenever you have a vertical line, we would say the slope is undefined. So anytime you have a line that is going directly up or down, remember that the line is undefined. Undefined and up both begin with the letter U, so that's just a way that I can remember that any vertical line is undefined. And anytime you have a line that is going from left to right or is horizontal, that slope is going to be zero. So any equation that is a y equal to equation will have a slope of zero, and any time you have an x is equal to something, that is going to form a vertical line, which has a slope that is undefined. Well, I want to say thanks for watching the video, and I hope that these examples were helpful, and don't forget to subscribe to be informed of new videos as they become available.